All right, so something that I do want to show you because if you've been starting seeds or for those kids that I just mailed seeds to yesterday, um, this may be something that you have happened to you after you start them and they germinate and actually start to grow. So I don't have a greenhouse here, which is very unfortunate, and I don't really have a great room to grow seeds or start plants in. So this is an example of something that has happened to mine. I started them, some of them I started it like two to three weeks ago and some of them I just started, I think just a week ago. But these are the plants that I started with. Ideally, I wanted them to go in my garden. I got these mini Jiffy greenhouses and they work great when you're starting to germinate seeds or if you're like a little behind the eight ball like I am if you put them in a warm room and you have enough moisture content in there they sprout really quickly so if you look at these plants from the side view um, they're getting really long and lanky and that's not a good thing what do you think causes them to get long in length. Okay, so some answers for yesterday. This is Levi, by the way. This is my two going on three year old. Um, the answers to yesterday's questions, uh, the first one was how long does it take a chick to develop? There were quite a few people that got that one right, but not as many as I would have liked to hope would get it right. And it's actually 21 days or three weeks. Cataraugus Little Valley Kids, you should actually be at least guessing the answers. I know that a lot of you are watching Lucas, Hunter, um, and I mainly for Intro to Ag, but I know that a lot of you guys are watching, and if you answer the questions, then I can at least count that as technically communication. So, And if you ever have any questions or you need clarification on anything, feel free to swipe up and ask me things. And this is Blake. Yep, he is just a month old today. So uh, the next question that I asked yesterday was about the chinchillas that are out in the barn. What was the original use for the chinchilla? And a few people guessed companionship, which now they've actually become like companion type of animals and people have them as pets. Originally, though, they were used for their fur or pelt. And unlike when we talk about like reusable types of fibers or animals that are used for clothing that is a reusable or ongoing providing thing like wool for sheep or fiber for alpacas uh they chinchillas were obviously it's a terminal use so they would be euthanized or killed and then obviously skinned similar to how like trappers do to get fur from those animals same idea and the common thing made with uh, chinchilla fur were jackets coats like the fancy coats they were, were really expensive you don't really find them around so much anymore and gloves also my dad used to joke when I had if you didn't know that about me I also had a breeding pair of chinchillas at one point in time and it was when I was in college and my dad used to joke that he was going to make the chinchillas into gloves. So the last question that I asked yesterday was what breed Roxy is. And a lot of my students got that right. And even people without agricultural backgrounds. So my friends from high school that I have on Instagram or Facebook, they even got that right. So I was pretty impressed with that. She is a lion head and they come in a variety of colors. The other breeds that were there, I do have an example of a chin, American chinchilla or ch giant chinchilla. Um, that is Peter's mom. So again, students, you probably remember Peter. So I will put a video on eventually of Peter and his mom and kind of talk about them. But yes, rabbits are also bred for meat. Uh, lion heads, I think, are just primarily a companion breed. They're not used for meat and I don't think that they're regularly used for their fur, but I guess if I'm wrong, somebody can correct me and swipe up and tell me that. So today on guinea hen versus traffic, I have been considering and wondering who is less intelligent, the guinea hen or the people that drive down our road. So we live on a very busy road, um, 242. People go by at 50 to 60 miles an hour. Um, and today, actually like 30 minutes ago, the buffalo were up by the fence by the road. And I was standing 
in the house at the kitchen sink and all of a sudden I look out the window and the guinea hen is trying to take on what I think was a Toyota RAV4, light blue in color, with some stickers on the back of it. I've never seen it before, but it had New York plates on it. And they are literally stopped in the, I think that's southbound lane, like heading towards Ellicottville, stopped in that lane. And my guinea hen must have been out on my front lawn, and it decided that it needed to try to take out this seemingly absurd object in the road so normally if somebody is dumb enough to stop in a lane of traffic like literally right in the dead center of the lane didn't even bother to pull over to the side of the road i would just let the guinea hen go and ravage the vehicle that they're driving which is like pecking the bumper and maybe trying to jump on the hood or the roof of the car um, but the problem was he wasn't just like on the side of the road trying to attack this thing. He was running around it. So luckily there wasn't a semi that was driving by or like another vehicle that was like swerving to avoid the one that had literally stopped for no reason other than to look at Buffalo. Uh, so I house with the dog and, um, uh, he's trained to not like Sophie, so she chased him into the backyard and all was well with the world. But let that be a lesson to you that you should always be cognizant and pay attention to your surroundings and realize that you can't just slam on your brakes and put on your four ways to observe what is obviously a rare sight because buffalo don't exist in the wild around here and it is pretty unique but you can't just stop and observe them because you never know when around to go and attack your vehicle. If you don't have any experience or knowledge about showing cows, yes, you do give them baths. After you get them nice and clean, you then use a blow dryer to blow dry them. These things are very expensive, but they also have like, they have two switches on them. So you can have really high powered. You can also add heat to it. This one is mine.